Hello everyone and welcome back to our emergency series. So it's day 11 of 31. So today let's talk about airspeed failures in a blocked pitot tube. So one of the tricky things about a pitot tube getting blocked is that you may not know what has happened right away. So let's look at two different scenarios. So the first is that the pitot tube gets blocked in flight as well as the drain hole. So in this case, the pressure in there is trapped. So if the airspeed changes in flight, the airspeed indicator will remain the same. So a climb decreases the static pressure, causing the trapped pitot pressure to push the airspeed indicator higher. So likewise, increasing static pressure during a descent causes the airspeed indicator to show a decrease in airspeed. So this change in static pressure makes the airspeed indicator act like an altimeter. So this may not be entirely evident at first and could even cause you to make some incorrect pitch changes to try and correct the apparent incorrect airspeed. So the other scenario would be if the pitot tube gets blocked, however, the drain hole remains open. So this would cause the airspeed to drop immediately without any ram air impact pressure. So when the airspeed bottoms out and you're still flying in cruise, that surely will get your attention in this scenario. So how do you correct this situation? So you could turn on the pitot heat, right? The most likely cause of this would be ice blocking the pitot system. But what if there is some other blockage and the airspeed never returns to normal? You know, how could you even possibly land without an airspeed indicator? You need an airspeed indicator to check your speeds. Well, the airspeed your aircraft is flying is predominantly a result of the pitch attitude you have and your power setting. So if you lose your airspeed indicator in cruise, you know, you had a power setting you were flying and you had a cruise pitch attitude and those two resulted in your cruising airspeed. Not touching the power and not changing the pitch will continue to provide a very similar cruising airspeed, right? Now, when you want to descend, you have a different pitch attitude and a different power setting. In your aircraft, you power back to some setting, set the pitch to some reference on the horizon. So you would do the same here, right? And this process continues all the way to landing. Downwind, base, final. There are appropriate power settings in your aircraft for each leg. And with the known pitch attitude and with the proper flap and gear configuration, it'll produce close to the desired airspeed even without looking at your airspeed indicator at all. So once you have a good understanding of the required pitch, power, and configuration for the pattern, you can practice flying the pattern with an instructor with the airspeed indicator covered up, right? After you do this a few times, losing an airspeed indicator won't hardly seem like a big deal at all. So how to prevent a pitot tube from getting blocked to begin with? Well, I guess it starts with the pre-flight, right? Ensuring the pitot tube is free from debris, which might render the airspeed inoperative is a good first step. And then once airborne, using pitot heat as necessary would help prevent the tube from getting blocked if icing conditions were to exist, right? So that would help also. So those are a few things we can keep in mind to help prevent this from happening even in the first place. So have you ever lost your airspeed indicator? Have you practiced no airspeed indicator landings? So it's something good to practice with someone else so you can really learn the pitch, the power, and the airspeed combinations of how your airplane feels and sounds at different airspeeds. So thanks everyone for watching day 11. Hope you are enjoying this series and we'll see you tomorrow on day 12.